is Arenys de Mon, a village of 8,000 inhabitants in Catalonia, Spain. I've been living not too far away from here for about 20 years. Today, the people of Arenys de Mon wish to take part in a peaceful local opinion poll. The question, would you like Catalonia to be an independent state within the European Union? Yes or no? Today's poll, though it carries no legal weight, has caused a tremendous hullabaloo in the Spanish media. Until just a few years ago, Catalan independence was a taboo subject. So what happened? The Spanish government banned the poll, but the people of Arenys de Mon are going ahead anyway. Paradoxically, the government has given permission to an extreme right-wing group called the Falange to come here and protest against the poll. They're on their way. Many Catalan politicians have turned up as well, such as Uriol Junqueras, a Euro MP representing a Catalan political party that seeks independence. I els catalans volem tenir el nostre propi estat, volem ser un estat més de la Unió Europea. I de fet, a Europa, la majoria dels estats que ara hi ha a Europa són estats perquè hem fet un referèndum d'autodeterminació. Nosaltres volem fer el mateix que ha fet la majoria dels europeus. Volem votar i volem votar democràticament per la nostra llibertat. This has upset plenty of people in Spain, such as the Secretary General of the far-right Falange Party, Norberto Pico, who regards this poll as anything but democratic. La democracia es un sistema de convivencia que se fundamenta en el respeto de todos y cada uno a las leyes. Entonces, cuando se está convocando un referéndum que ha sido declarado ilegal, no se está respetando la democracia. For many years now, there's been an ongoing conflict between Catalonia and Spain, which many feel will lead to the end of Spain as we know it. It's high time that the story of this little-known conflict is finally explained. I'd lived here long enough to know that to get to the heart of the matter, I'd first have to go to talk to some very important people outside Catalonia, in Madrid. And none more important than José María Aznar, President of Spain between 1996 and 2004. I asked him if he thought that nationalism was Spain's biggest problem, and if the post-Franco division of the country into different autonomies was still working. Es verdad que eh, los españoles llegamos en el año 78 a un acuerdo de carácter general en virtud del cual pues, España pasaba de ser un estado centralizado a un estado descentralizado. Eso se ha ido desarrollando con los años, pero algunos parece que no tienen bastante. ¿no? Como todo es... And what about the problem of nationalism in Spain? Hoy el nacionalismo es un problema en toda Europa. ¿no? Hay un resurgir nacionalista. Y, y los nacionalismos clásicos, los nacionalismos de toda la vida, pues se encuentran con nuevos bríos, con nuevas fuerzas para hacer algunos planteamientos y algunas demandas pues que antes no se les hubiese ocurrido hacer. ¿no? Y luego, si las situaciones políticas son débiles y favorecen ese desarrollo, pues pueden producirse situaciones complicadas. ¿Hay debilidad en España en estos momentos? Yo creo que se ha debilitado el Estado y la nación española en los últimos años de una manera innecesaria y preocupante. Even after years of living here, I confess I wasn't that well up on Catalan history. So I asked one of Catalonia's best-known historians, Josep Maria Soler y Sabater, to explain the background to the present conflict. En 1714, digamos, hubo una guerra 
que Castilla o el reino de Castilla se impuso sobre el resto de los territorios que formaban, digamos, toda la península ibérica. Entonces impuso por razones de conquista militar las leyes de Castilla y es entonces cuando Cataluña perdió sus leyes. For the Catalans, 1714 turned out to be a key year in their history. Before that, they had enjoyed virtual independence, even after the famous marriage of their ruler Ferdinand to Isabel of Castile in 1469, when the centralizing Bourbon dynasty claimed the Spanish throne in 1701. The Catalans, in alliance with Holland, Portugal, and the English, decided to back the non-centralizing Habsburgs. The result was a 15-year war that culminated in a grueling two-year siege of the Catalan capital, Barcelona. Left in the lurch by the English, the Catalans lost the last remnants of their sovereignty with the defeat of Barcelona on September the 11th, 1714 a date which has now become their national day, on which they recall the loss of their political freedom and ask for it back. In the 18th century, Spain has tried to eliminate Catalan, no? Mm. Introduce Spanish. During the through the administration, the public administration, and through the roads, and through the school, because at this time, during two centuries, it was really, Catalan was forbidden in the schools. And during many times, for instance, the papers in Catalan were forbidden, uh, the broadcast in Catalan was forbidden, and the television at the time of France was forbidden. Against this long-running fascist regime. In the 1960s, economically desperate monolingual Spanish speakers from other areas of Spain were encouraged to move to Catalonia. To find out about the effect this has had, I got in touch with a long-term English resident, Matthew Tree, an Englishman who writes and publishes in Catalan. The Franco government, instead of putting infrastructures where they needed to be put, Extremadura, Andalusia, etc., they found it very convenient to have a whole group of monolingual Spanish speakers moving in to an area like Catalonia, which was at that time still very much a, a Catalan-speaking area. You move people in for economic reasons, create friction and tension, and try to eliminate the language that's spoken in the area. After Franco's death in 1975, democracy was introduced in Spain. In Catalonia, a statute of autonomy was negotiated, which placed great emphasis on the restoration of the Catalan language to its rightful place and status in Catalonia. We Catalans, uh, because we believe that in Spain, in the framework of Spain, but we are a nation. We are not like the others because we have another language, our own language. We have our own uh, political institutions historically. The text of the Home Rule of the, of the Autonomy Statute of Catalonia says that official languages are Spanish and Catalan. But the own language of Catalonia is Catalan. That is set in the, in the, in the law. However, tensions have arisen because Catalan is now the main language used in state schools and, in general, is now widely used in Catalonia. The rest of Spain regards this as a sign of disrespect, or worse, an attempt to eliminate Spanish in Catalonia. At the forefront of this criticism is the right-wing media, and in particular its most outspoken journalist, Federico Jiménez Los Santos. Es decir, han reproducido la misma fórmula de Franco. Ahora mandan, como en tiempos de Franco, pero en vez del, del castellano, imponen. El catalán. No en Cataluña que te obliguen a hablar el catalán y no el castellano. Yo no hablo de separatismo, pero son muy nacionalistas y son muy suyos. El resto de España yo creo que es diferente. Que el idioma que te obliguen a 
dar clases en catalán. No me, parece, no me afecta, soy andaluz. Falta mucha democracia. Ya se sabe, la Cataluña pues es la, la dictadura blanca, digamos. The dislike or the hatred or the, the distrust uh, against other national groups in Spain goes much more against the Catalans than it does against the Basques. I think really because the Catalans are the only people uh, who really do have a live, active, linguistically differentiated culture. In Catalonia, for example, if you want to scolarize your children to teach them in Spanish, they can't. They can't. They can only receive teaching of the Castellano, of the Spanish, as a more language, but no exist ninguna escuela en Cataluña que enseñe a los niños a estudiar en, eh, en español. I decided to ask another broadcaster, Curri Valenzuela, whose afternoon show is the third most watched TV program in Madrid, what harm there was in Catalans learning their own language. They are punishing themselves because when they finish studying, they cannot work outside Catalonia in the rest of Spain. And we, they have a problem now with doctors, engineers, journalists. They, they only can work inside there because they don't speak Spanish, which is uh, very uh, stupid. However, even non-native residents of Catalonia disagree with this view. Oh, the whole idea. I've got two small kids, five-year-old kids, who are in the Catalan public education system at the moment. And when they come out of school, they're surrounded by media and press and uh, um, all kinds of other factors which are almost exclusively in Spanish. So to counteract that effect, they have immersion in Catalan. And of course they all come out of the education system uh, speaking Spanish as well. I mean, I, I, I don't know anybody in 24 years of living here of any age group at all who is a monolingual Catalan speaker. So what happens if a parent living in Catalonia wants his or her child to be taught only in Spanish? Son molt pocs, poquíssims, els pares que ho demanen. Per què? Perquè aquí tenim un sistema educatiu que és integrador, que no fa segregació dels alumnes en funció de la llengua familiar originària. De tal manera que aquí la llengua vehicular d'educació és la llengua d'aquí, Exactament igual com a Madrid és la llengua d'allà i a Londres és la llengua d'allà. I wondered about those Catalan citizens who had been born in other parts of Spain and moved there. Do they feel discriminated against? Yo llevo aquí 40 años y no me siento oprimido. 35. ¿Y se siente catalana también ahora? O? Por supuesto. Me siento catalana con mis raíces andaluzas. 30 años ya. Mi señora es catalana. Ajá. Y mis hijos son catalanes también. Yo creo que Cataluña es un país integrador eh, en ese aspecto. Pero siempre que también respeten sus costumbres. In Spain, Catalans have a reputation for being tight with money. This is because back in the 19th century, despite a lack of natural resources, Catalan society, socially flexible, trade-based and with many small-scale property owners, was able to create the first industrial revolution in southern Europe. Spanish legislation, however, remained geared to a mainly agricultural economy that favored large-scale landowners. The emerging Catalan bourgeoisie reacted by insisting that public money was plowed into infrastructures which would favor a modern industrial economy. And as the only economy of this type was in Catalonia, the Spanish started to see the Catalans, and the image has stuck, as financial parasites, sponging off the rest of Spain. Always bribing the rest of the Spaniards to get the what they want, and we give them to them, and then they ask for more, and then and go on and go on, and never will stop. So was money then the main bone of contention between Catalonia and Spain? Los Catalanes chupan de los españoles. 
Los catalanes son los que más dinero reciben de España, sí. Que el PSOE les regala a todos los catalanes, les da mucho dinero. No escondas tu interés por el dinero en algo de cultura o de tu identidad propia, porque entonces yo mañana digo que las personas que vivimos en mi edificio tenemos una cultura propia, y entonces yo no quiero pagar impuestos y quiero que el resto me paguen a mí. I decided to check with a fellow Englishman who knows Spain a lot better than I do. Well, I think it's partly to do with... Um, I mean, this is... What I'm about to say is pathetic. I mean, because it, one would hope there would be more serious answers. To a large extent, it's jealousy. Um, because when the Catalans protest, when Catalan politicians protest that they believe that a disproportionate amount of... of the Catalan economy goes to the rest of Spain. This is then presented to the rest of, of Spain as if you know, they're being robbed. I think in these moments, Catalonia aporta muy poco al conjunto de España. Se ha convertido en un obstáculo. No añade, sino que quita. Y además es un cáncer porque es es una zona de España sin libertad que está extendiéndose. It's very similar in many ways. It has similarities, let's say, put it like that, to a certain kind of anti-Semitism. You know, a lot of the stereotypes or stereotypical uh, traits that are put on the Catalans are not too different from the ones that were put on Jews before uh, the Second World War. Back in Barcelona, I asked the head of the Bosses Union, Joan Rosell, about the accusations of Catalan greed. If we are contributing to the rest of Spain each, each year with 20% uh, more, at the end it, it, it is a disaster and, 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 the, and the infrastructure in Catalonia, it doesn't, it doesn't work. On the other hand, we are paying, uh, we are, we are paying toll in, uh, in, uh, in highways, we are paying private and we are paying public. And it, uh, it can be impossible to maintain this situation in the, in the next years because if not, our, our tendency to the poverty will be very, very clear. We are sharing our wealth. Uh, but it's absolutely incredible that there are the other parts of, uh, of Spain can say that we are not sharing. We are sharing, but we want to, uh, to share just only one part, not 100%. Catalunya pateix, es víctima d'un dèficit fiscal permanent. Cada català o catalana paga a Madrid aproximadament uns 2.500 euros que van a Madrid i ja no tornen aquí. És una xifra astronòmica. As Catalonia is Spain's third wealthiest autonomous region, it seems only reasonable that they should pay more to help out the poorer areas of the country, just as similarly wealthy regions do all over Europe. This means that they pay central government more than they receive from it. The difference is called a fiscal deficit. Let's take a wealthy English region, the southeast, for example. It is 17% wealthier on average than other English regions and has a fiscal deficit of 6.38%. Or let's take Paris, which is 51% richer than the average French region and has a fiscal deficit of 4.36%. Or again, we can look at one of the wealthiest German lands, Bavaria, which is 16% richer on average than the others and has a deficit of just under 4%. So what about Catalonia? It's 22% wealthier on average than other Spanish regions, but its fiscal deficit is neither more nor less than 9.76%, almost 10% of everything it produces, which is more in real terms than the English Southeast, Paris or Bavaria. No less than 18,500 million euros skimmed yearly off the taxes of a total population of just 7 million, making Catalonia by far the most highly taxed region in Europe. In the last 10 years, what with 50% of all recent foreign immigrants to Spain now living in Catalonia, it is unable to meet the new challenges this poses to its locally financed school and health services. They pay a lot, for example, they pay a lot to the rest of Spain. And in part, they have reason. Well, in part, they have a great part of reason. Because, for example, with what they pay imposts, the Catalans, like many regions, they are maintaining... Eh, se están manteniendo eh, 
comunidades como la comunidad andaluza, o sea, Andalucía, ¿no? Sí. Andalucía le están convirtiendo en un país desubvencionado, sí. con el PER y compañía, ¿no? Sí. Es normal que fuera de Cataluña, gracias en parte a las fuerzas fiscales de los catalanes, y hay territorios que puedan tener la totalidad de los libros de texto gratuitos, que puedan tener el permiso de conducción de vehículos para jóvenes gratuitos, que puedan tener más plazas en hospitales, más plazas en residencias para la tercera edad. So, far from being selfish, Catalans see themselves as the ones who are being exploited and feel that the contribution they make entitles them to a greater degree of autonomy. Es que Cataluña es víctima de un hecho. Cataluña no puede hablar de tú a tú, de nación a nación con España. Y esto no es víctima, esto es una realidad evidente. Lo que sí que es verdad que España le cuesta mucho aceptar planteamientos de tipo federal, de tipo confederal, de tipo igualitario. Esto España no, no lo acepta. A la Gran Bretaña y a una tradición democrática y una cultura democrática que no existe en España. La tradición y la cultura democrática a España son más frágiles, se han visto agredidas por largos periodos de dictadura y, por tanto, Cataluña es como Escocia, pero España no es como la Gran Bretaña. Y, y cada una otra diferencia. As the communication gap between Spain and Catalonia widens, there is less willingness on either side to compromise. As Alfonso Guerra, vice president of Spain under the socialist leader Felipe González, explains. En realidad, el crecimiento de estas ideas independentistas en Cataluña y en el País Vasco se dio en los, la segunda legislatura del señor Aznar. Cuanto más centralista, españolista, autoritario se mostraba, más crecían los nacionalistas. All over the world, national identity finds an outlet through national sports teams. Catalonia isn't allowed to have one. But this lack is partly made up for by Barcelona Football Club, which has become Catalonia's default national squad. Nuestra idea de, de país es diferente de lo, de, de lo que es España. Entonces nosotros consideramos que, que Cataluña pues es un poco más y el Barça ha sido durante muchos años la forma de representar esa nacionalidad del país. El Barcelona representa esta selección nacional que nos falta en Cataluña. Este es otro país. Aquí es otro país. Cataluña es otro país. No, es un tema muy... Muy largo de explicar, pero bueno, aquí nos sentimos más... Es como Escocia. En Escocia no se ven muchas banderas de la Gran Bretaña, ¿no? No, no. Pues lo mismo. Entonces, ¿pero ¿tenéis algún problema con España o...? <risa> bueno, eh, sí, sí, pero bueno, que queremos ser independientes. Pero bueno, no nos dejan. In the stadium, Catalan flags are waved with pride. There isn't a single Spanish flag in sight. Among supporters of Real Madrid, Spain's leading football club, anti-Catalan feeling is freely expressed. Hace dos semanas fuimos al campo del Barcelona, no había ninguna bandera española en el campo. ¿Eso por qué? No era... Esa gente no es española, cuando no tiene bandera española, pues son españoles. Son catalanes y punto. La gente o es catalana o es española, pero las dos cosas no está bien visto. La España es... En inglés, porque Cataluña y no de Spain. Ah, ¿y es un problema para los españoles como conjunto? No, no, para para Cataluña, para ellos. ellos. Sergio. No para España, para ellos, que son catalanes y se quieren independizar. Es que en Barcelona la bandera española la queman. ¿Y eso por qué? Pues porque no les gusta a España. Pues por eso le llamamos, en España se le llaman los polacos. Porque son de son, son catalanes, 
segunda ahí de, de Cataluña. Nosotros somos españoles y son catalanes que se vayan a la mierda. It isn't just the man in the street who is getting worked up about the nationalist question. The Spanish media, with broadcasters like Jiménez Los Santos, are now adding even more fuel to the fire. No viene Cataluña y no se puede hablar. Si hablas y les llevas la contraria, te atizan, te encarcelan, te persiguen, te multan, te acosan, te trituran, te injurian en TV3, en fin, de todo. Te sumergen. Y es más, te ahogan. Mira, aquí el proceso de liquidación que se está viviendo en España no es violento como en los Balcanes, de la noche a la mañana, boom, una guerra, etc. No, es un arrinconamiento sistemático de la gente que se sigue sintiendo español, que quiere hablar en español, que quiere que sus hijos estudien en español y no pueden. Es muy similar, y no quiero hacer comparisons, but from what I've read, it's very similar to the kind of broadcasting that was going on in Yugoslavia ten years, for ten years, leading up to the Civil War, um, and the, the Bosnian War, I mean. Uh, and for me, it's quite frightening, you know, I hear that man on the radio, and uh, more than upset me, or, or he, he frightens me. To find out just how serious this issue had become, I decided to seek expert advice from a Madrid University professor, Jaime Pastor. El papel que juegan la mayoría de los medios de comunicación eh, es, en general, negativo, porque en lugar de favorecer ese conocimiento de las otras culturas y tender puentes, digamos, entre las distintas identidades nacionales existentes en el marco del Estado español, tienden eh, a buscar confrontación. Hay personas que estamos muy preocupados en esta situación, que, eh, bueno, recuerda a veces, salvando las distancias, digamos, el ambiente que vivía Viena en los años 34-35, ¿no? 1934-35, que si no eras un poco antijudío, eras poco austríaco. Ahora en España se vive una situación peligrosa de si no eres un poco anticatalán, digamos, eres poco español. ¿no? As we've seen, Spain is far from being one big happy family. And the blackest sheep of all in this family is clearly Catalonia, for historical, linguistic, economic, and even sports-related reasons. Again and again, I've heard the Catalans condemned as nationalistic, selfish, and even treacherous, in as much as they want to break up Spain. Parece que lo de Cataluña quieren ser de otro sitio. Y Cataluña pertenece a España. ¿Y se podría romper España con cuatro años más de zapatero? Ya está rota. Lo único que la puede hundir. Tal y como está la Constitución hoy en día, España se rompe. Si se cambia la Constitución, pues habría que ver hasta qué punto es legítimo lo que los independentistas quieren hacer. Pero hoy por hoy, con la ley en la mano, lo que se pretende hacer es eh, romper España. Why do you think this um, tension between Catalonia and the rest of Spain has suddenly come to the surface? Catalonia is the dynamo, to a large extent, that keeps the rest of Spain going. And I think what it, what it is, I mean, this is purely a guess, because it's the sort of thing, it's so irrational, it's very difficult to give you a precise and specific reason. I think it's to do with the fact that centralism and the idea that Spain might be broken up is one of the, the kind of staples that the right wing in Spain can always turn to if, if it's in trouble, if, you know, if it, if it needs to, to drum up support. No, España ha pasado en muy pocos años de ser un país de mentalidad muy impositiva, de las cosas imponerlas, a necesidad de dialogarlas. Aún cuesta mucho esto. Hay un cierto caudillismo, ¿no? Vamos muy bien. España está unida. Una España. Grande y libre. The belief is uh, almost irrational. It's almost an, a religious belief in the unity of Spain. And that if you even talk about um, an area of Spain being a country in its own right, uh, or even just a cultural universe in its own right, um, because it speaks a different language, for example, then it, it's like they, they, they short circuit, you know, it's sort of like they cannot take it, they cannot take it, and they just refuse it and they push it out of their minds. 
And it's, it is a bit like talking to religious people, you know, you get to this point where, you know, God exists and that's it. There is a growing feeling among Spaniards that Catalonia needs to be put in its place. España ahora mismo es una marioneta que está manejada por los catalanes y por los del País Vasco. Va a tener que volver a la derecha a recuperar España. Many Spaniards now look back nostalgically to the years under Franco's dictatorship, when all expressions of national identity, except for that of Spain itself, were rigorously banned. The Valle de los Caídos is the mausoleum in which the founder of the Spanish fascist movement, the Falange, José Antonio Primo de Rivera, and Franco himself are buried. Built by the forced labor of Spanish Republican prisoners, it is also the largest church in Europe, after St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Why are you coming to visit this monument? It's something very nice here in Spain. It symbolizes, for example, that there was also an era in Spain. Yes, and the civil war was the war. The war and the 40 years of the dictator. Yes, and for the 40 years of the dictator, were they positive or negative? It depends on who asked me. And who asked you? For me, they were positive. For many people, it's a homage to the Franquism. Is that right or...? Well, maybe it will be. Franco did that and it's very good. Do you think you have the question of the separatism Catalan, for example? I don't think it has any more importance. And if they were to end up by separating, well... Well, no, because it's a Spain alone and blessed by God. It's a Spain, big and free. But I wanted to know how Spain's politicians defined their national identity, post-Franco. Because there is no Spanish nationalism. There is no Spanish nationalism. There is the idea of a Spain united. What exists is a Spanish national sentiment, very strong, very vigorous. I think there is a majority of Spanish nationalism. But is this strong national feeling compatible with the existence of other nationalities within Spain? The national nationalism Eh, refleja más miedo al futuro, a la tendencia al reflejo de una mayor plurinacionalidad en el marco de la Unión Europea y la pérdida de centralidad de los Estados-nación que los nacionalismos periféricos. A España es impensable un presidente del gobierno español que sigue catalán. Es absolutamente impensable un presidente del gobierno español que tenga el nombre en catalán. Y es encara més absolutament impensable un president del govern espanyol que a casa seva parli en català. El nacionalismo espanyol, comportándose de esa forma tan reactiva frente a las formas de autoafirmación de los otros nacionalismos, está mostrando su propia debilidad. Es decir, ni siquiera hay un consenso en torno a la bandera, ni siquiera hay una letra en el himno español. We still don't know which kind of country we are. We are still discussing which is a nation, the concept of, the, of a nation. Can you be Catalan and Spanish at the same time? We haven't resolved this question yet. I asked a famous Spanish writer, Fernando Sánchez Dragó, what being Spanish meant to him. El español es el único ser humano que duda continuamente de su propia identidad. Para un inglés, para un alemán, para un japonés, no, eh, no es un problema ser inglés, ser alemán o ser japonés. En cambio, el español está en guerra consigo mismo. España, como decía Ortega, es un país que no se ha vertebrado nunca. Y una vez más lo estamos viendo eh, y eso ha generado ese sentimiento de duda, esa lucha del español consigo mismo, que exteriorizada se traduce en continuas guerras civiles. España, y esto es un frío dato de la historia, es el país del mundo que más if Spain was so anti-Catalan, and the Catalans had already started having polls for independence, why didn't Catalonia simply declare independence unilaterally and leave Spain? Claro, la ley es la ley. La Constitución española garantiza y dice expresamente que España es una nación y garantiza expresamente los mecanismos para salvaguardar. La, la cohesión y la unidad del país, ¿no? Si vemos la Constitución del año 78, ahí hay una afirmación rotunda, ¿no? de la unidad e indivisibilidad de la nación española. 
luego se atribuye en el artículo 8 la función del ejército de defensa de la integridad territorial, un artículo que incluso ahí donde está ubicado es excepcional en la, en la constitución es, comparado con otras constituciones. ¿no? Although the constitution says it's legal to send in the troops if national unity is threatened, Spain is supposed to be a fully democratic country. I asked Senor López Tena, a leading legal expert, how realistic it was to expect the army to step in. All the Spanish of option of violence on dictatorship or military rule is not uh, open and uh, is not open anymore. So it's just a matter of democracy. Yo creo que la modernización de España también pasará por reconocer los derechos absolutos de catalanes, vascos y gallegos en crear un estado diferente o bien esto radicalizará las posturas y Cataluña y Euskadi se irán de España. No me gustaría que España se convirtiera en una nación de naciones, para nada. Considero que soy español y España es mi patria. Luego lo demás son... ¿Te imaginas que todo el mundo hiciera lo mismo? Eh, nos pasaría lo mismo que en Bosnia, que en Yugoslavia y en todos los sitios. Sería lo mismo. Pediría, pediría la independencia a Cataluña, la pediría a Sevilla, la pediría a Valencia, la pediría a Euskadi, la pediría a todo el mundo. Creo que, que no romperíamos la nación por completo, lo que es España en sí. Yo no quiero una confederación de países dentro de España. Yo quiero una España unida. España es España. Una, una. Los sentimientos nacionales no se pueden eliminar fácilmente. Se puede tratar de que sean eh, respetuosos con los otros sentimientos nacionalistas, pero la gran mayoría de la población mundial tiene sentimientos nacionales. Por un total de 2.671 votos a mesos, 12 nuls, 29 blancos, 61 nuls, 2009. Since the Orange de Mon poll on September the 13th, 2009, Dozens upon dozens of towns and villages around Catalonia have been holding similar polls on Catalan independence, and many more are planning on doing so, the capital, Barcelona, included. Through these polls, the Catalans are sending a clear message to Spain. For 300 years, we have had to listen to you and do what you tell us. Now this is what we have to say.